Happy Halloween. Let's look in our goodie bag. Hello, welcome back. This is another episode of the $500 Rags to Riches 5-Year Account Challenge. And let me just get my face out of the way. And I want to look at some of the stuff that we kind of geared towards on the last episode. So this is the uh, account view in Weeble, and I just kind of want to demonstrate the significance of small numbers and the significance of slightly larger small numbers. So uh, first and foremost, uh, we got our dividend payment from Clip, KLIP. It's a Chinese ETF. Um, it was paid out on Halloween, so yesterday, uh, and it was only for six shares. I thought I was in before the ex-div date, so I didn't get the full 12 share price, but it's okay, right? Because I still, <clears throat> I still locked up my money in the investment side. So next payment, I'll just get twice this amount. So I'm not really worried about which month I necessarily get filled on, but um, it was more important for me to just shift my speculative amount, what was remaining, into the uh, investment side of it. And, you know, I have... I still have several days to wait until the deposit that I put in um, settles. So I don't have to worry about it, right? I'm, I'm leaving the state tomorrow. I'm not going to come back till next Monday. It should be settled uh, within a few days of that. So I'm not too worried about speculative trading right now. It's a nice little time off. Um, <clears throat> but what's important is that I have a dividend schedule and it's still contributing even when I'm not actively trading, right? Because this whole... You know, the, the end of this week, I'm not going to be able to touch the market. I'm, I'm completely hands off, right? But I'm still making some money, okay? And that's the cool part is I don't have to necessarily be a slave to the market. So if I'm looking at, uh, and you can ignore all this stuff. This is just where I bought and sold the shares. So it says like negative $99 here. That's just because it took $99 out of my settled cash and reduced my balance from three forty nineteen down to two forty eighty nine dollars 89 cash-wise. And I just use that money to buy shares. It doesn't mean that I lost money on the position or anything like that. So I'm not too worried about seeing these little red numbers here. This is just uh, saying that I bought shares. Uh, so over here, uh, if we just go left or right here, you can see this is the account value. This is my day's PL. Again, I haven't traded anything. It's just the natural movement of price. I'm not concerned with these small moves. Uh, in this case, it just happens to be up a little bit. Some days it's down a little bit. It doesn't really matter. Uh, because I'm not locking in these these unrealized profits or losses just yet. So uh, cash balance here is 505.29. Now this is not settled yet. It still has to go through the bank and it has to clear and all that good stuff. So it's not going to show up in my settled cash yet. Now I could use this money to buy and sell and speculative trade early, but I don't want to, right? I'd rather just have it in my settled cash so I can see it. That way there's no pressure for me to, you know, keep track of how much I... <laughs> you know, may or may not be able to use and it won't show up negative numbers here in my unsettled cash and all that good stuff. So I'll just wait for it to settle. There's no rush. Um, this is just some overall position PL on the account over the past, uh, I don't know, year or so. Uh, there's just some stuff that I traded, uh, nothing really significant. Now this cumulative PL, this is what I'm interested in. Um, the account value obviously is going to go up or down, right? But the cumulative PL over the last five days, you can change it to a month, three months, six months, whatever. Uh, this shows the progress that I've made over a short time, right? So consider this like a moving average, all right? So in this case, for the last five days, uh, the cumulative P&L that's realized and unrealized is $8.94. <clears throat> Sorry. And half of that is this dividend payment from Clip, okay? So that brought my settled cash balance from $1.11 because remember, I put the entirety of my speculative amount, which was the remaining portion of the $500 con uh, contribution that I just put in, um, up to $5.29. Now, some people might say, oh, that sucks. You know, it's a $1,700 account. I don't care about $5. But this is $5 or $4, I'm sorry, that I get every single month. And when you add that up, uh, you know, along with all the other positions that you're collecting dividends on, and then you compound that over five years, it matters. So uh, I'm not ever going to take $4 or $8 or $6 or anything like that for granted because this is my passive income. I'm taking the profits that I've already made and I'm buying these shares and they're just going out and making more money for me without me ever having to re-expose them to risk. So I'm okay with these smaller payments. I know a lot of people uh, kind of crap on it, but it really, really, really adds up if you just set everything up the right way and just let the system work. Uh, you don't really need to do anything super crazy to get that to speed up over time, uh, especially if you're adding profits from your speculative trading into the mix. Uh, okay, and then over here, we've just got a, a graphical representation of each calendar day's P&L. So for this week, so far, I've been profitable. 
uh, overall. And you can see that that's what this number here is. Uh, so uh, Monday, it was down $4.58. There was some drawdown with Johnson & Johnson. That's one of the biggest positions I have. <clears throat> um, and then Tuesday, we uh, went up. Okay, so we made a profit on that day by three times that amount. And then today, we're up 0.45 cents or a dollar four or something. This doesn't always update at the same time. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're doing okay, right? We don't really have to worry about trying to trade and getting in and out. Overall, it's just going up, and we don't really have to worry too much about it, right? That's the whole purpose of this is just to get that curve established and to let the price kind of ramp up over time. So, And you can see the account is 1732.55, and that involves, or I'm sorry, that includes the losses that I've taken. So I've taken some smaller losses and I'm okay with that as well because I get those back at tax time. So I don't have to worry too much about, you know, oh, I have to win every single trade and all that good stuff. It's so much less stressful just to understand that as long as I don't jump back into that position and sacrifice it through a wash sale, I get that money back. I get 100% of it back on my taxes, me personally, um, if I'm keeping the unrealized P&L below $3,000. And if, you know, if I go over that, I just get it back on subsequent years. So there's a lot of comfort in knowing that I can literally just throw the same dollar into the market until it becomes a winner. And then once it becomes a winner, I throw it into the dividend side. So <clears throat> it takes a lot of pressure off. So let's go ahead and look at the dividend schedule here really quick. Uh, we can see that Clip, again, I, I really thought I was in before this. Uh, some stocks you can buy on the XDiv date. Some days you have to buy before. So I bought on the XDiv date. Uh, so I only got paid for six shares. Uh, I now have 12 shares, but again, it's okay. I don't really care too much uh, about which specific payment that I get. Uh, I just know that next month I'll get paid for 12 shares unless I can buy more with the profits, okay? Uh, JP Morgan, JEPQ, this is the next. I kind of sorted these by pay date. Um, so this one, I have some shares as well. The XDiv date was October 2nd. Uh, I'm sorry, the next one, uh, the next date should be uh, in the next couple days, next day or two should be the XDiv date. And I already bought my shares for this ahead of time. Uh, so I'll get, uh, let's look at the positions here. So JEPQ, I have five shares, okay? And that means that I'll get five times whatever their cash amount is. It's probably around 40 cents. So I'll get another $2 for them, uh, ideally on or around November 5th, because it's a monthly. Um, you know, so that adds up. Okay, I don't have to worry too much about that. Monthly here, again, uh, in the middle of November, we should get the... Uh, roughly 55 to 60 cents. Now this one's kind of all over the place, but Tesla is pretty nice. Uh, I got 11 shares, so that's probably another five or six dollars, right? So so far we're up to, I don't know, uh, like 12 bucks <laughs> so far. And again, it doesn't seem like a lot, but that's one percent of my portfolio right there, just for doing nothing every month. All right, so one percent compounded over five years monthly is is pretty nice. Uh, and then here. Uh, this one I already got, so the O position here, I got three shares for a total investment of 142.80, uh, you know, with some small drawdown, it's 3.78% drawdown, I'm okay with that. Uh, so I'll get three times, you know, 25 cents, whatever, so 75 cents I'll get, and again, this is monthly, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I'll get that in the middle of the month. Now, this is already locked in, I'm guaranteed to get those, because uh, I already got those before the XDiv date, it's a 25%, uh, 25 cent cash amount. Uh, we owned it on the record date. We didn't sell these, so I definitely get this payment on November 15th, and that's something that I can guarantee. Uh, Johnson & Johnson is quarterly, so this one I kind of had to uh, shuffle around a little bit, right? So this one I bought early, uh, you know, just because it was coming out of November's funds, even though it was before November 1st. Um, I definitely got my shares before November 20th, which is three weeks from now, so I don't have to worry about trying to buy this later in the month. It's just secured for the month. Uh, which means that on uh, December 5th, I'll get three times this dollar nineteen. So that's another $3.58, 57 cents, I'm sorry. Uh, again, just for doing nothing, but locking up my profits into investments, okay? So I'll get that right before Christmas. And then the Schwab US dividend, blah, 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 same thing, right? We're, we're just, it's a quarterly payment, uh, 65 cents. This one I own one share of, so next month I'm going to buy one more, right? Because the ex-div date should be... Uh, to the middle of the end of December, right? So September 20th plus three months is December 20th, roughly. Um, but December 1st comes before that, which means I can buy those shares in December, okay? Uh, and then I'll get paid on or before Christmas for that, um, and we'll be good to go. Now, this is a, a cheaper one, right, for a pretty moderate dividend, given that it's quarterly. So it's a good one. It's just not as aggressive as, like, Tesla or Clip, so I'm not too worried about that. 
Um, now, one final thing here that I want to point out <clears throat> is that you'll see that these are pretty red right now, especially Tesla, uh, Johnson & Johnson. This is a bigger position. You can see this is a $460 position, roughly, uh, and it's down about 6%. I don't care about this number, right? As long as they don't cut the dividend, I don't care about this number. The only one that I care about being red is KLXE because this is a speculative swing trade, and it's $20. So I don't really care too much about this one either. I'm not going to let it break me. Um, but all of these I've bought with the intention of using the dividends to offset their cost basis down to zero. So Tesla, for example, will pay for itself in 22 months, uh, assuming that it's it's a roughly similar dividend each month, okay? Which is within my five-year target. So I don't really care too much about how long this takes to pay off as long as they don't cut the dividend. That's all I really care about. If they do, I'm diversified and I can manage that with the other positions. All right? Uh, and it's equity, so I don't really have to care about the entire investment going down to zero dollars as much. Uh, now, Johnson & Johnson, this I plan to hold for, you know, maybe 20 years. So this will definitely pay itself off over time. Um, so will O, so will Clip, so will Schwab, so will the JP Morgan one. Now, the the one thing that I will put in place, and this is something that I don't think a lot of investors do most of the time, uh, because we get so fixated on holding these for as long as we can until we die and then passing them off to our kids and all that, which is great. But if we're thinking about it in terms of time and efficiency, what I'm going to do for each of these is I'm going to calculate how many months it would take to offset the, or I'm sorry, how many years it would take to offset the uh, the dividend. And then I'm also going to extrapolate it out to where that dividend and the total value of that position will be five years from now. And I'm going to add that to the average price. And then that will be my sell target. So if that price, in the off chance that the stock runs for whatever reason, whatever crazy reason, if it runs within the next two years and it hits my five-year target, I'm going to sell it early. All right? And again, it's very unlikely that that will happen, but just having that plan in place speeds up that five-year process and it condenses it into two years, just if that hits within two years, um, which cuts three years off of my plan. Right? And then I could just take those funds and either put them right back into this position when it's a lower price and just restart that cycle again. Or I can shift those into a more stable position, which is probably what I'll do, um, into something like Microsoft or IBM or something a little more uh, uh, consistent. Right. So the plan early is to get these relatively aggressive positions built out early so I can rack up those dividends faster, get them offset sooner. And then I'm going to shift the profits and the overall net worth of these into... Um, more passive positions that are more stable and more um, compound generation, generationally. So, uh, yeah, so in the off chance that Clip, just for whatever reason, runs up to and beyond the level that this would normally be worth over the next five years, I'll sell it early. I don't care. It's not a big deal. That's a good problem to have. Um, and again, I can just re-enter on a pullback or when it, when it comes back down to a reasonable level, or I can put the profits into another position entirely. Either way, what I've done here is I've taken all my contributions, right? At this point, we're up to $1,700 in contributions. <clears throat> I've determined that in this case, 1,119 is worth investments. And I'm getting about a, th I forget what exactly the number was. I think it was like four or $500 um, return over the year, over annual. Um, something like that. I don't remember exactly the exact number it's a it's a good percentage though and i'm using this speculative allotment if i want to i don't necessarily have to um and i'm just kind of messing around with the numbers i'm just pushing and pulling the numbers around to make things more efficient or less efficient in this case i'm doing it more efficiently um you know and if i could hit those targets sooner why not why not just sell it lock in those profits and then put them into a different position which is my plan anyway i just get to do it sooner all right so that's something i don't think a lot of investors really um, consider because they, they're just in it for the long haul. And some people will, will uh, dollar cost average up beyond that five-year target or 10-year target or whatever their, their limit is. And at that point, it just doesn't make sense to do um, because, yes, you're still getting the dividends, but the dividend isn't the end goal. The dividend is the compound profit. The dividend is a tool to get us there. So if the dividend is outperformed by the stock move itself and that gap exceeds the five-year limit of what the dividend can perform, lock it in. <laughs> you know That way I don't have to worry about what the dividend may or may not do. It's guaranteed profit. It's right there in front of me. So I could just lock it in and move on. Um, 
you know, other than that, I don't care how far down the number goes because it's offsetting. Every time I buy shares and collect dividends, I'm offsetting the cost basis um, by A, averaging down, and B, collecting dividends to offset it even further. So it's just going to pay itself off sooner if it goes down further, okay? So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, if it goes up, love that too. And that's it. One of those two numbers is going to happen first. Either my cost basis will go to zero, at which point I'll have free shares and just keep racking in dividends, or I'll hit my five-year target on each position, right? Every single one of these, I have a number in mind for five years from now, what it should be worth. Um, I'll just hit that early, and then I don't have to worry about it. The, the guarantee is that I'm not going to hit it late. Uh, I'm not going to miss that goal unless they cut the dividend, okay? So that's a very important concept is we need to have an end result in mind for everything we do before we do it. So with that said, I have to get off of here. I have a bunch of stuff I have to do. This is the last day before I leave. So I won't be here Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Uh, I'll try to make another episode Monday when I get back. But hopefully this all made sense, and I will dig into some more um, more example-oriented stuff when I get back. So everyone enjoy your week, and don't eat too much sugar. <laughs>